Okay, let's look at question 33 now. The diagrams below show three different circuits A, B, and C. All the batteries and the bulbs are identical. All the bulbs light up when their switches are closed. Whenever we look at an electric circuit question, how should we attempt a question like that? What I always tell my students is that I want them to trace the circuit and that will form part of their working. Okay, so what does it mean to trace the circuit? Let me show you. So let's start off with circuit A. Okay, tracing the circuit means what is the possible pathway for electric current to pass through this circuit over here? Okay, so this is how we do it. So there's one possible pathway for electric current to pass through circuit A. Now let's look at circuit B. How about circuit B? How many possible pathways are there for electric current to flow through the circuit? There are two possible pathways. Let me show them to you. So one is on the inside, okay? And one is on the outside. So I'm using different colors to represent them so you can see them more easily, okay? The one on the inside is the purple line. The one on the outside is the red line. Okay, how about circuit C? How many possible pathways are there for electric current to flow through? What do you think? There is one possible pathway for electric current to flow through. So with that, let's go on to part A of our question. Based on the information given, arrange the bulbs P, R and T in order of brightness from the brightest to the dimmest. How are we going to do that? Now I want you to think of this analogy, okay? So if I have five sweets and I want to share them with two people, so how many people are there all together? Let's say five sweets, I want to give them to two people. Each one will get two and a half, correct? How do I get two and a half? Five divided by two. So using the same idea and the same concept, let's look at A. How many batteries do I have? Three batteries. How many bulbs do I have? Two bulbs. So all the electric current is going to come from the three batteries. So each bulb would then receive electric current from how many batteries? 3 divided by 2 gives us 1.5. Okay, so I'll call this a power of 1.5 received from the 3 batteries. Now, let's look at circuit B. Let's start off with the purple circuit, okay, the one in the smaller uh, circuit over here. How many batteries do I have in the purple circuit? 3 batteries. How many bulbs do I have? Only one bulb. What does this tell us about circuit B's purple circuit? it means that it does not need to share. So bulb R is going to receive all the electric current that's going to come from the three batteries over here. So the power given to R is three. Okay, let's look at the one below it, bulb S. So we'll, we trace the red line here and we notice that there are three batteries in the red line. How many bulbs are there? One bulb as well. So it doesn't need to share the power received by S is also going to be 3. Okay, the last one for C. This is slightly different. We have 3 batteries. Okay, how many bulbs do we have? We're going to have 3 bulbs. So 3 batteries, 3 bulbs, do they need to share? The answer is yes. So 3 divided by 3, each one will get 1. Is that clear? So based on the information, arrange the bulbs P, R and T in order of brightness from brightest to the dimmest. So the brightest one is going to be the one that has the largest number because it receives the most electric current. So it's going to glow the most brightly, right? So which one has the largest number? P, R, and T. R will come first, right? R receives a power of 3. What is the next one? It's going to be P because it receives 1.5. And the last one is going to be T. Is that clear? Okay, so now let's go on to part B. What would you observe about bulb S when R is removed from the bulb holder in circuit B? So this is what they usually like to ask you. Advantages and disadvantages of series and parallel circuits. If you look at circuit B, the bulbs are arranged in parallel. So what do we learn about parallel circuits? When one bulb fuses, there's still a closed circuit with the other bulb which means that electric current can still flow through the other bulb, allowing the other bulb to be lit. So if I remove bulb R, okay, what will happen to bulb S? Bulb S will remain lit. So that is our answer for part B, okay? So bulb S will remain lit. What's the reason for that? I'm going to introduce to you the four steps, okay? What are the four steps? The first one is, what is the situation? 
The second one is, is it now an open or closed circuit? The third step is, does electric current pass through or flow through? The last step is, what is the outcome? Okay, let me show you the answer and then I'll discuss it from there. So, if we're going to look at C, give a reason for your answer. We say that the bulbs in circuit B are arranged in parallel. That was what I mentioned just now, right? Step one is the situation. When bulb R is removed, this is given to us in the question. Step two, is there now an open circuit or a closed circuit? So there will still be a closed circuit with... Thank you for watching this video. If you like my discussion, please hit on the subscribe button below. If you'd like to find out more about my analysis of other questions in this paper, please click on the videos on the right. So, thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.